a uh, Chinese company with a hard to pronounce name thought it would be a good idea if uh, I tested their uh, EDM machine. After uh, googling EDM I agreed because who doesn't want to play with a uh, spark generating metal vaporizing machine. So here it is the SFX 4000B high power broken tab remover and it's actually their high-end model the low power EDM 8C would be a better fit for my uh, little channel but hey I'm not complaining it's a free power toy it's actually not completely free a couple of weeks after I uh, received the machine the Department of Revenue sent me an invoice apparently I owed them uh, some VAT or BTV as we call it over here and import taxes and it doesn't matter that I didn't uh, pay for the machine now if you're the kind of person that's uh, jealous right now that's okay you're only human but if you're the kind of uh, person that's jealous and wants to leave a uh, nasty comment then I have to ask you to kindly uh, piss off so now I have to make a video about this machine a review and to be honest I don't know the first thing about an EDM machine but I will uh, read the manual and uh, try to sound uh, smart I guess but the good thing is I'm not getting uh, paid for the job and uh, I didn't sign any contract so basically I can do uh, whatever I want with this machine but I did agree to highlight a uh, short list of talking points there you go so uh, with that out of the way let's make a video and have some fun it's uh, obvious I didn't do an unboxing video I think unboxing videos are the work of Satan and generally pretty lame there are some real garbage out there especially those done by the Apple fanboys that uh, seem to drool over uh, a bit of packing material having uh, said that this machine uh, was very well packaged it was double boxed and uh, well protected for the uh, rough journey from the east to the west and uh, since nothing fell out and nothing was rattling my uh, first impression was uh, was pretty good this leaflet was the uh, first thing I got my hands on and it was good for a nice laugh at first glance there's nothing wrong with this uh, promotional document there are uh, both machines on the front and uh, the work head a uh, nice uh, starburst for uh, some special effects and apparently the company has an ISO certificate uh, 2008 I see uh, that's for uh, quality control and the machine comes with a uh, CE certification and that basically means that the machine complies to the uh, rules of the European market that's all very nice here uh, they compare the features of both machines and these illustrations uh, give you examples on how to uh, set up the machine you can uh, use it on the side and even upside down um, if you got a tab stock in uh, the ceiling so here are the uh, different uh, electrodes and uh, how you use them to uh, vaporize bolts and uh, tabs so far nothing wrong with this uh, document uh, not even a bit of uh, chinglish but then we get to the back of the uh, document and the first thing we see is uh, one of their machines being smashed with uh, Thor's hammer and at this point I'm thinking uh, uh, WTF what company in uh, their right mind puts a picture of uh, their flagship uh, product being smashed to pieces on a uh, promotional leaflet but it gets better uh, if you read the text apparently if the uh, machine doesn't work you're supposed to tell them and uh, then make a video of the machine being smashed so now I'm thinking uh, double what the fuck are they actually asking for videos of their products being smashed apart 
do they uh, know where those uh, videos uh, usually end up? I uh, found this a uh, very odd promotional piece uh, that is supposed to convince me of the quality of their uh, product and service. And I think I know why they are doing this. They uh, don't have a uh, global network of service engineers so it's easier to refund the machine uh, than to hire a local uh, technician. But uh, to ask for a video I don't know. And uh, what about uh, refunding uh, VAT and import taxes? Or perhaps uh, getting a replacement machine? Personally I don't think this is the best way of doing things but uh, it sure is original. On the other hand I uh, searched and uh, didn't find any videos of these machines being smashed up. So either they haven't sold any or they all work fine. You decide. In any case, I am uh, fully prepared to make the uh, first uh, EDM smash video. Here's the uh, user manual, no need to uh, look at it since I've already uh, read the uh, PDF version. And usually the uh, printed version is uh, older than the electronic version. Um, I found the user manual readable with only a small Chinglish percentage. But it isn't all that uh, comprehensive. and. Uh, rather short but the illustrations are pretty good I actually got some extra info and uh, tips on how to use this machine from uh, a video the company has on uh, YouTube I will uh, put a link in the description below the video there's also a CD-ROM here but unfortunately I cannot uh, use it since I uh, replaced the CD-ROM drive in my computer with an extra hard drive to uh, store video footage these here are all the accessories that uh, come with the machine. Everything you need to start uh, vaporizing tabs and bolts of all sizes. And uh, all this is actually stored within the machine. On the back of the machine there's a uh, nice little glove box to uh, store all accessories. They actually uh, mention this glove box uh, in their leaflet. Accessory storage one in box. Uh, personally I'm uh, not that impressed. I would rather have a, a separate uh, toolbox like the uh, ADM HC uh, apparently has. Because once all this is uh, unboxed and used it will be hard to fit everything uh, back inside that uh, little glove box. And uh, without packing material things will start to move and rattle. And not to mention uh, water that uh, might have been left behind inside the uh, water pump. I don't think it's a good idea to uh, get water inside uh, a machine like this. This machine isn't that uh, heavy but uh, with a separate toolkit for the accessories it's even lighter and you'll have something in the other hand to uh, keep you in balance. Maybe uh, a padded water tightened uh, removable tray on top of the machine might be a better idea if you ask me. So what do we have here? There's a uh, big ass mag base, um, all kinds of uh, electrodes, a coolant water pump, a drill chuck to hold the electrodes, the uh, working head that uh, will automatically lower and raise the electrode, and some uh, cable and uh, coolant lines. I will set this all up and uh, I guess then it's time to uh, generate some sparks. Um, but first I need to uh, prepare the uh, test subject. When I, I agree to uh, test uh, this machine I uh, asked for some uh, tabs because uh, I didn't want to break any of my own uh, tap and die set. So uh, they provided me with some uh, big ass tabs, bigger than uh, I'm uh, used to using. And for some reason the uh, markings have been uh, ground away. But after measuring and a bit of googling I now know that this is a uh, M20 tab with a 1.5 millimeter pitch 
and I need to drill a 18.5 millimeter hole and that's way too big for uh, my little uh, drill press so I uh, prepared this uh, piece of steel in uh, my lathe so let's put this in the vise and uh, see if we can uh, break it this uh, cuts easier than expected must be a good tab Well, uh, that's deep enough. Let's uh, break this thing as far as I can uh, remember. I've never broken a tap in my whole damn life. And I'm hoping that's about to change. Otherwise, I'm looking pretty silly here with this big hammer. Haha! <laughs> Easy. Well that looks like a uh, nice clean uh, break. The rest of the uh, tab didn't uh, shatter. Let's go to the uh, SFX 4000B and uh, make some sparks. This is a uh, reasonably sized uh, tab. It has a pretty solid core. And I could probably spark through the core using this uh, hex electrode. Or maybe this round one will even fit. But it's probably better to use this uh, blade type of uh, electrode and uh, spark away two of the flutes and hopefully then the rest will come out. I'll uh, borrow your crapper for a while if that's okay. So here is my uh, setup. It smells a bit funny, but uh, lucky for you guys that won't uh, show up on camera. I got a steel plate in here, and that's for the uh, mag base to uh, hold on to. With the weight of the mag base, it is uh, already surprisingly stable even without the uh, steel plate. Of course, that would change if you use the uh, work hat on its side. Um, I've set the uh, processing depth of the uh, work head to uh, just under 4 uh, centimeters. There's about 32 millimeter of the tab left, so this should be enough to disintegrate the uh, flute. I used the square to line up the electrode. Um, the machine actually comes with this uh, little bubble uh, level, and you can use that on top of the uh, work head. But in this case, I'm not. Uh, tall enough to uh, look onto the uh, bubble level from above but a square should be good enough besides with a tab this big there is some margin for error there's an F clamp on the test piece it's uh, only there to give this uh, red uh, electric clamp uh, something to hold on to the uh, workpiece is not fixed in place but I think it's heavy enough that it will not move the uh, water pump over here is uh, fixed to the kitty crabber with uh, four suction cups and to protect it from uh, swarf coming from uh, the metal vaporizing I will uh, throw in a couple of these uh, coat hangers with magnets they uh, might just uh, extend the life of the water pump a bit but in any case, the machine comes with a uh, spare uh, water pump in case the uh, water pump craps out in the kitty crabber. So now I only need to add some water and we should be uh, ready to go. This is a uh, tap water especially made for uh, vaporizing taps well not really but uh, although uh, distilled water is actually more efficient without any minerals 
the water isn't conductive and less power will be wasted when the uh, sparks bridge the gap between the electrode and the uh, workpiece. Well let's uh, switch on the machine and uh, see if we can make some sparks. The on off switch is on the back by the way. Now I'm going to follow a procedure that uh, I've seen on a YouTube video. Uh, first I switch on the water pump. Well that works. I'm going to um, raise the workpiece a little so the water can uh, escape underneath. Alright, let's try that again. Much better. Uh, high frequency servo and there it goes. So there is no stop button. Reset. Well, that worked. I uh, wasn't expecting the machine to start uh, immediately. I thought I had to uh, press the uh, down button. It looks like uh, those uh, first sparks uh, took out a chunk of the electrode and that was only while running in the low power mode. I doubt that I can use this uh, thin blade like uh, electrode in high power mode but uh, I will probably try it anyway so let's start over I increased the speed of the uh, water pump now I'm going to press the down button see what happens there it goes I'm slowing down the servo. Let's uh, flood everything. Increasing the speed of the servo. When I uh, switched uh, the machine on the first time, uh, the servo was set, uh, set uh, to 12 o'clock. That's here. Hey. Ah, that's the right setting, finally! Stability! The, the water is uh, slowly turning black and I uh, doubt those uh, coat hanger magnets will have any effect. So let's switch the water pump off again. And there it is, Black Swarf.
I think we're close to the end. Um, things uh, should destabilize uh, when uh, the electrode uh, comes through. There's, uh, there's 3 millimeters of travel left on the workhead, according to the scale that is on there. If I set the uh, depth correct, we should be uh, through the flute now. But I don't see things destabilizing. Any moment now, it's going to hit the uh, limit stop. Well, that's perfect timing. And it's coming up now. This here is the underside of the tab. And as you can see, all flutes are still there. And that's because a large part of the electrode got vaporized. And that probably happened uh, at the beginning when uh, things weren't stabilized. So I'm going to grind a bit off and uh, try again. I'm ready to uh, start vaporizing the uh, second uh, flute. Um, I'm surprised at how dark the water turns. I actually had to take out uh, some water in order to set this up. Although at the moment it uh, seems to be uh, settling on the bottom. I'm now going to uh, flood things again. Let's see if we can vaporize this uh, second flute without any uh, problems. Water pump. High frequency. Servo. Down. Ah, there we go. Much more sparse this time. Maybe that's because there's less water. are destabilized again. Finally! Back in action. And again it goes off. Maybe we need more water. I'm carefully turning the uh, servo knob in uh, both directions, but it's not as stable as it was before. Finally! With a little bit more experience, this should get easier. <laughs> uh, 
Now we wait. I'll leave the camera running, see how long this takes. I think I'm going to get a cup of tea now. This will take a while. So that's another failure, the same result as uh, on the first flute, and I'm pretty sure it's the operator's fault, not the machine. But the good thing is, I now still have uh, two complete flutes left uh, to experiment on. Um, I think what happens here is uh, some electrode uh, material vaporizes, uh, and the opening starts to get slightly tapered towards the bottom and then at some point the electrode and the uh, tab come in uh, contact and the uh, servo motor starts searching for a better position by moving the electrode up and down and this all gets worse as the electrode gets deeper and deeper and uh, more and more of the electrode uh, vaporizes it uh, also doesn't help that the electrode is uh, a lot wider than the uh, piece that needs to uh, come off Maybe a, maybe a tapered electrode that is a, a bit thicker on the bottom end might uh, fix the problem. But uh, this machine also has a uh, patented uh, vibration option. It uh, basically vibrates the electrode uh, and uh, that results in a larger opening. And that might fix the problem. So let's try that out. Alright, now I'm going to process uh, flute number 3. And this time I will be using the uh, vibration function. High frequency, servo, vibration. I can actually feel it through the table. It's uh, not really pleasant, it's uh, pretty annoying. But some people might like it. Alright, pressing down. We need more water. Turning up the servo. It's a lot easier to uh, find the correct setting now. Well, you don't want to switch that off. That's done. Switching off vibration. Damn 
bubbles. Yeah, I think there's still a bit of the electrode missing. Still not all the way through. And the electrode uh, looks basically the same, although there might be a little less wear on the side here. But about the same amount of uh, material got lost. So at this point I'm thinking it's probably pretty normal that uh, you lose some of the electrode. That's why they uh, include so many. But uh, you really should uh, compensate for the uh, electrode loss when uh, setting the uh, processing depth on the uh, workhead. I don't remember reading anything about this in the uh, user manual or seeing it in any video. Um, also, how much do you compensate? Um, is it a certain percentage of the uh, total processing length or maybe the electro size or is it just uh, guesswork uh, well I will add a uh, centimeter to the uh, work at uh, processing depth and then we'll try the machine in the high power mode and I'm not sure if that's a good idea because these electrodes are pretty thin we uh, might end burning them up I think it was in one of their videos that they uh, mentioned that uh, you, you should lose the low power mode up to uh, 5 or 6 millimeters and uh, bigger than that you should go uh, into high power mode. Well this is certainly wider than 5 or 6 millimeters but not thicker. Here we go again. Switching on the machine. Starting the water pump. Starting high frequency, the servo, vibration and this button here labeled stepper sets the machine in high uh, power mode I have no idea why they called that uh, stepper there's uh, some pretty heavy uh, relay being switched and now if I uh, press the down button, things should start. Um, in low power mode, you don't uh, use the uh, uh, current adjustment uh, dial. But apparently, it is needed in high power mode. So that's something I will have to uh, work out. But uh, we'll see how this goes. Alright, here we go. And I'm hoping for some fireworks. Not too much, of course, because that might damage the camera. That's dialed in. Let's dial At the moment, we are drawing about 10 amps. In a low power mode, it only draws 2 amps, and the voltage seems to be around um, 35 volt. This is as stable as I can get it. We're, uh, we've been running for about 5 or 6 minutes, and um, the electrode already moved from 5 to 1 centimeters. So unless the electrode is split in half, we should almost be um, at the bottom of the flute. Already done. And that's uh, 8 minutes. That's 4 times as quick as uh, in low power mode. damn bubbles. It is still bubbling. 
Well, at least the uh, electrode isn't split enough. Well, a bit more is certainly missing. <clears throat> so high power mode was uh, at least uh, four times as quick as uh, low power mode. But it also cost about the double amount of uh, electrode. And uh, as you can see, I still didn't manage to uh, cut off a fluid. I'm feeling a bit like a failure here. Even though uh, I added at least uh, a centimeter to the uh, processing depth on the uh, work head. Um, I guess I will need a little bit more experience to uh, correctly guess the uh, processing depth. But uh, for now I had enough with this uh, blade electrode and I will uh, push through this uh, hex electrode from this side and get this job finished uh, today. I set the, the processing depth to 4 cm, but um, I expect it will be uh, finished uh, long before that. I haven't changed the settings, but we're now drawing between 6 and 8 amps and about um, 30 volts. This hex electrode isn't uh, working as stable as that uh, blade electrode. The voltage and the amp meters are a bit erratic. I guess we're already there. Why isn't the head coming up? The limit stop on the uh, work head has uh, vibrated loose. I tighten it up again so I expect it will stop processing at any moment now. Yeah. Finally. So that's uh, something uh, to keep in mind. You really need to tighten up that uh, limit screw because otherwise it might uh, vibrate loose. Well, I finally win. And I really did a number on that tab. Almost through there. The same over here. Here's the end of that. Uh, last electrode. It's pretty rough looking but at least it got the job done. And also very important the uh, thread on the workpiece is still fine. I will uh, sleep well tonight. So now I have to clean up this mess I don't think it's a good idea to uh, submerge a uh, mag base into this stuff. I'm really surprised at how much black stuff is coming of uh, such a little tab. Check out how much gunk these magnets have got. So it looks like it's not a bad idea to uh, use some magnets to try and catch some of that uh, swarf. I bet I just set a new world record for the uh, slowest broken tab removal ever.
but since I'm not on the clock that's fine. I'm just uh, starting to learn about the machine. I think in time me and the SFX4000B will become uh, good friends. I was a bit uh, surprised about the amount of electrode that's uh, lost during processing. It makes setting the uh, processing depth a bit of a struggle. In this case not a problem, but what if you are working against the clock on a uh, delicate piece of equipment with a blind hole. It will be hard to get that right in one try. You might need to take a couple of passes and uh, carefully inspect how far the uh, process is along. And it also might be uh, necessary to uh, grind the electrode flat again before it uh, bottoms out. But perhaps there are tricks I don't know about that uh, makes EDM live a little easier. I like the machine. I like uh, playing with it. But I will not recommend it simply because I'm no expert on these kind of uh, machines. You will have to do your own uh, investigation and make your own informed decision. But maybe my uh, first EDM steps will help you a bit. There are plenty of uh, Chinese EDM machines on uh, Alibaba. Most of them are cheaper. But as far as I can tell none of them has a uh, high power mode. And being able to work four times faster can be an important thing in a competitive market. But if you got some real money to uh, waste by a uh, wire EDM, those machines are just unbelievably freaking cool. Well I guess that's it for me. I had a few more tests planned but uh, I'm running out of time. And this is already my longest video ever. So congratulations to you for reaching the end. I probably wouldn't even have started a video this long. Uh, one more thing, you can actually buy brand new shapers on uh, Alibaba, big ones. How cool is that? I am surprised uh, that those uh, antiquated machines are still being made. Wouldn't mind testing one though.